reactivity can hurt the player. So anyway, we're going to see how this... Sure, why not? Fine. Right. Belmont versus K. Rule. We yeah. I saw it before you guys did, so that's why my reaction was what it was. So I guess chat voted K rule, guys. Seems to be the case. They just want to have they want Sensei to have a bad time. Which, you know what? Sounds about right. So wait for this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Aki. <laughs> Very cool. Um now, if I'm not mistaken, I think that Frost is just beating Crown. Uh, it'll absolutely clang with it. As uh, we've definitely a couple, seen it a couple times. It'll clang and pass right through. Um, yeah. But if Dark Falcon actually wants to keep up his zoning like he is, I wouldn't be surprised if we see more of those jump crosses. Uh, especially in the other direction like this. Look at all the coverage that you gain from the boomerang effect, and you neutral got up into holy water. <laughs> Day one K rule. This certainly is. <laughs> Day one K rule versus day one Belmont in a way. Just with that, I'm talking about on release when people were throwing holy water at the ledge. Uh. That tech was huge though, because if he did not get that, it looked like Dark Falcon was setting up for an up B finisher that might not have killed on town and city thanks to the high ceiling, but it was certainly put even more damage than there already is. <laughs> That's it. There's a uh, down throw up tilt was a true combo since so you can throw that. And, well, it doesn't seem like he's quite ready to. As Dark Falcon, this is another day at the office with just a big body. He can throw out his whip. He can throw out his projectiles. The jump back down smash was a yeah. solid idea. But Now, one thing that's worth noting is that for the most part, it feels like they're... The out of shield options from Sensei kind of aren't doing it. Look at how freely Dark Falcon is able to just jump at his shield, throw a projectile, kind of. I think he's even thrown out some unsafe aerials on it and been pretty, uh, pretty comfortable doing so. But so, and I mean, K Rule of course doesn't have necessarily the best out of shield options, and I doubt we'll be seeing K Rule in game two, considering you know this is pretty much a deal done with chat, but. Regardless, it actually is the sort of thing where moving into the next game, Dark Falcon better not expect to be able to get away with this same level of shield pressure. Yeah, we're even to the same level. Oh, he got a stock. But <laughs> and the tea bag. <laughs> he, he, he earned them, I guess. So thank you, Cube Max, for the follow. Uh, but it's. Yeah, this is kind of a, a wash, a little bit of a game one. It's yet another neutral getup, but the active crown, that's where the tin tilt input matters because it hovers on ledge just like holy water does combos into the axe yeah that's that's another just easy an easy ride for dark falcon who seems quite used to just abusing the big body of k rule and the slow speed of him entirely it's just that seemed rough to say the least man that right there reminded me of a. Uh... What's Sephiroth's side B? Shadow Flare. Shadow. That was like Shadow Flare, because there were like three projectiles all coming in, converging on one point for that last stop. And all of them, at least somewhat autonomous, because the, they last far longer than Belma is in uh, hit stunt or is in uh, lag for it. So, hey, <laughs> it's certainly a fair comparison. I love that cross throw, by the way. Like, it. It got him killed. Like that was that was a stock where that sensei ended up taking. But this cross throw backwards, so smart because it comes in from the side, and the the blunderbuss uh, interrupted it. But it's just an extra layer layer of character creativity and, and the character mastery where you're able to still know your ranges, which is going to be especially effective in this matchup because hitting zero suit is a whole lot harder than hitting k rule <laughs> yeah that last match it's it's but a memory now because sensei going to be playing a character he's much more familiar with that being the zero suit and the nature of how belmont wants to be playing against zero suit completely different than k rule already we're starting to see some uppies uh i like the idea of throwing it out because the fact that it comes out so quickly and has invincibility you're, it's going to be a lot harder to find openings on a zero suit so you know quick combo breaker like that might just be what's necessary 
it certainly it, it certainly is one of Belmont's more uh, powerful grounded option. I mean, frame seven, the frontward hitbox is rather big. Uh, it's whiffing is going to be kind of problematic. Zero Suit does have the the extra privilege that comes with being a little bit skinny, a little bit thin. But it's not going to matter if you have to use all of your resources to get back from so far. And Dark Falcon, with the coverage on stage, not trying to do anything that yeah. isn't expected. Now, from one thing is that for some of these, the jump crosses especially, uh, Sensei has been shielding them on the way back when Zero Suit has a very low crouch. And that's the sort of thing where he might be able to crouch under some of these projectiles in the right timings. And that's something that could be very useful. You know, Belmonts are very used to their opponents shielding their projectiles and how to add on extra pressure. But if they start crouching underneath them, I'm sure he will also have answers, but it might not be quite as clear cut. I just want to shout out the, the Waveland after the mash out from the, cra from the berry. That was sick. Was a fan. Uh, it looks like that's going to be the closing for Dark Falcon. I mean, 73% is solid, especially with uh, Zero Suit not having the best damage output and the roll read, but good SDI coming out from Sensei to get uh, get out of the true confirm and still get back to stage. Yes, he grabs ledge, so he's got those resources back, and yet again, another, another flip jump berry. Yeah, it's... You know, people talk about how Zero Suit might have the best disadvantage in the game, and a big part of that is from that flip kick. And really, the question is, how is he actually going to be countering it? For the most part, it feels like he's throwing out these options, but doesn't have a clear answer for flip kick off the ledge. But I also like the fact that Sensei not really abusing it, not going for it too many times to the point where it's something that can be, you know, he can be given the chance to learn and figure it out but there we have dark falcon uh taking that stock with the hipper at forward air in fact you can angle that that aerial like that just adds a level to vers a versatility to it that it's just being showcased right now even against a mobile character like zero suit yeah it's it's really making the difference because not only is he ma is dark falcon making sure to throw these holy waters on platforms to uh to condition Sensei to not jump, but he's also oftentimes angling the whip uh, upwards to try and catch those big burst, uh, big burst ver uh, aerial movement. It's worked to the point where Sensei's doing things like this. He's waiting in shield, which uh, okay, all right, I guess that worked. It, GG, shake my hand. <laughs> just, just I'm quick jump sure. back and forth. <laughs> I, I feel like half of all neutral interactions that Sensei has won have been from a flip kick berry. It's it's a real good move, and it's real hard for just a slower character like Belmont to keep up with. I mean, they have their airspeed is the same as. As they. you say that, all of a sudden, every single one of these flip kicks is being punished. Not even necessarily with the axe straight up, but by throwing the axe and limiting the angle that he can actually use it at he's able to punish with a forward or something something else and we are now entering the end game stages of this adaptation has been going back and forth here but that flip kick it might not be the resource that uh sensei was able to use before let's see how it actually pans out though i think he's grabbed holy water does he have it in his hand no he doesn't oh just good i mean the best part about flip jump is the fact that as soon as you catch on to how to counterplay it, the, the Zero Suit player stops using it. And now we just see good old-fashioned, like, air-to-air -air gameplay. Uh, Dark Falcon still managing to cover themselves, but yet another jump Holy Water. They don't have their double jump. Oh, yes, they did. They do. They this did. is actually they both of these. He's at 152%. Both of them deep in the red right here. Another ledge trap. He goes for the flip kick and not actually able to punish it right there, though. Oh, this whip. That, that but, should be it. What? Uh, spaghetti. Oh, but spaghetti. it still got it. <laughs> I, I don't know what the heck that ending was. Uh, <laughs> there were so many moments. There were so many moments where both of them could have died. I mean, the obvious one is the, the whiffed boost kick. But right here, like, this is up smash. Like, just up smash yeah. right yeah. here. Like, dash forward a little bit covers this entire space. He tries to boost kick. A forward this air is, misses. Yeah, this is the forward air angled up missed. 
and it gives Zero Suit just enough time to pull out shield. I guess the up smash is to try to cover an example of the miss, but that nice angle downward. But the up smash also could have been punished for a kill. Just like drop, yeah. drop through the platform back air probably could have killed him. Uh, let me see. There were like, literally there was, should it be dead here? Should, should be, be dead, dead here. Should be dead here. Yeah, just drop through the platform side B because you get on the ground. Oh my God. <laughs> We're waiting. Oh, but okay, we get we get to check out this angle that was whiffed on the Belmont border because that is just that's dude. actually hilarious. Oh it my! Clipped her ponytail. Oh but, my! The uh, hurt box shift from the landing animation on upbeat. <laughs> She gotta get low. Get low to the floor. I had a, I had a hurt box for her <laughs> ponytail. Ponytail hurt box. A new ponytail thing for players that can play. That reminds me of. You ever seen Blades of Glory? Blades. What? Blades of Glory. I don't believe so. No. Okay. Then I'm absolutely sorry. never mind. Um, okay. <laughs> there's just the, the, there's a moment in there where they have like a CGI shot of somebody to ice skate just shaving some the stubble on someone's <laughs> face and that's what that reminded me of that's awesome. just